part of the reason why I, I, it didn't occur to me to, to do this is because, can, can you think of, a, of the obvious reason why courts have not ruled against free employment screening in most cases? No. Public safety. Liability. No. Nobody's challenged. Nobody's asked him. It's because it's required under state law to, in most states. To, to conduct it. To do psychological screening. Yes. Most states require it, either by regulation or by, or by statute. So the fact that it's required, and, the, and the, the, the only question at that point is, did the psychological evaluation get conducted according to the statutory requirements. And, it, it, and if, if, if it didn't, it probably isn't going to get to court. It's probably just going to be redone or um, sent to someone else for a proper evaluation. But in, in these cases are of some particular uh, utility. And let me spend a, just a little bit of time with them. In the case of Nilsen, uh, the Ninth Circuit affirmed the dismissal of a suit filed by a rejected police applicant that failed a psychological evaluation in which the evaluation cited her stubborn nature and impulsivity. That's that phone. That's our phone. Is that you? Do I have to get that, Jim? Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. My mom. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, the appellate panel enforced a pre employment waiver of legal rights for. Uh, so, what the court said is that when, when you signed the waiver for the police agency, Mr. Applicant, you signed a waiver for any acts or omissions in the course of the investigation into background, employment history, family, health, personal habits, and suitability for employment. You signed a waiver. The fact that you don't like the outcome of the psychological evaluation is too bad. That's it. There's no liability. You can't sue for it. You waived it. That's Ninth Circuit. Now, given that, given Nilsen versus City of Mesa, uh, relatively recent case, 2007, you want to make sure that the waivers for the agencies for which you do psychological screening include that kind of language. Mm -hmm. This is a Ninth Circuit case. So if you work in the Ninth Circuit, check your agency's waiver, uh, compare it against the comprehensiveness of the language used in Nilsen. In Murray versus uh, County of Nassau, the, uh, the court, New York court rejected a judicial challenge brought by a police applicant. Um, and what had happened was the, the applicant brought his a personal uh, doctor's uh, evaluation in. And uh, the agency had two psychologists and a psychiatrist who said he, he didn't meet the qualifying criteria. And the court in Murray said, uh, the agency's experts trump your own private expert. Next. <laughs> okay, Terry versus Guller. That name sound familiar? Yeah. 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 Irv, Irv, it's either Irv or Matt. I'm not sure which it is. Um, was the successful uh, defendant in this case. This was Matt. This is a New Jersey, was it Matt? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a New Jersey case. And uh, what had happened was the, the uh, applicant got rejected following an appeal. Guller did, it was, it was Matt Guller apparently, did the initial evaluation. It was then, uh, there was a, a, an appeal evaluation done. And what the court said is that the, even if the first psychologist negligently or improperly conducted the pre-employment evaluation, which the uh, applicant claimed, that, that Guller did it wrong, uh, the independent analysis severed the chain of proximate causation. No. So be grateful if you live in a state that has appeal evaluations. Because if you find the person unqualified, they have a, a, a second evaluation, second opinion evaluation, and that 
evaluation finds the person either qualified, gets hired, and there's injury, or finds them unqualified, the chain of causation is severed, at least in the New York court. Whether that would be true in another uh, jurisdiction, of course, depends upon a lot of factors. But that was true, at least in the New Jersey case. 